Hi, it's Mike Stevenson. Um, in this video, we're going to have a quick look at um, a couple of scenarios about um, logic apps with Azure Storage as the SFTP um, kind of capability. So, I guess first off, the first question you might have is why would you um, why would you want to use SFTP with logic apps? So, I guess um, you know that it, while it's been more considered more of a legacy approach um, passing data over SFTP compared to some of the, the newer approaches that we use. Um, it's still common in the real world. Lots of people do it. Um, the thing about a storage account, so Microsoft introduced the preview feature, which you can see, um, see down here, which is really a proxy on top of a storage account that lets people send data via an SFTP protocol. And, um, and they can then um, send data that ends up in your storage account. So there's a couple of use cases where I think people might use this. So number one would be um, quite often we work um, building an integration solution with a partner who has an FT SFTP capability. And um, we for testing, we need to have a test um, SFTP server. So a couple of companies I've worked with, we'll have a VM with an SFTP service on it, you've got to manage that VM and you've got the ongoing cost for it. So SFTP um, gives us a, a new option where on, on the storage account anyway, where we can actually just get rid of that VM and we can potentially just use SFTP against the storage account to upload a file and, um, you know, kind of do a couple of other, other approaches. Um, so that can use it, we can use it to mock out that SFTP server. The other option would be if I had a partner who was going to send and receive data between me and them, um, I can, in my integration platform, I can in interact with a storage account using the storage connectors. So I can upload a file or I can um, receive a file with a storage account connector but the partner can send it over SFTP if for some reason their, their capability is not as advanced or they've got different technology so they can drop back and use SFTP. Now let's imagine a scenario where the partner uploads a file over SFTP. We might configure storage events so we can have an event triggered to an event hub that triggers some reactive integration when the... Um, when the file gets uploaded, we can trigger a logic app from that or something. That would be quite a good way of combining a sort of traditional approach with a more um, modern approach um, so that you can have these these two different capabilities play together in the same integration. So let's have a quick look. Um, here I've got a storage account and when I set it up, I've enabled the SFTP preview and I can create a local user. Um, actually, before we do that, to show um, in the containers I've basically got Mike's SFTP container I've got a shared folder in it and I've got an Amazon invoice PDF document in here so that that's what's um, that container I'm going to expose over SFTP so here in my um, preview SFTP blade what I would do is I'd add a new user so I'll go Mike 2 I can choose the authentication, so I'll just say password, which it'll generate for me later. I then need to say um, what container I'm going to use, so I'll say you can have access to that container. I'm going to give it all the permissions, and you would want to specify a landing directory as well. So here I'm just going to specify um, my SFTP as the landing directory, so that'll basically be when you log in with that account that's the default directory you'll go to and you'll see things underneath it. So it's a good way if you've got multiple partners, you can set them each with their own credential and they all go to their own landing account so they wouldn't see each other's folders and stuff. Um, if we have a look at the account I've set up previously, so you can see I've got that pretty much configured the same as what I had um, just shown now. And the first thing I would do is... Um, I'd go to something like FileZilla or WinSCP, and here you can see I've got my configuration for connecting. So I just want to test I can connect to it and I can see that that document. So the host name is going to be the name of your storage account here and the username. So you need to remember that you prefix it with um, the 
the storage account name plus the container name. And then the password you would get when you when you created your account and you can you know you can kind of save that and stuff. So here if I go and connect and we'll just check check I can go in I can go into the shared folder and there, there's my invoice here. So we know we're all good. So the next stage is um, when we come to the logic app we're going to look at two scenarios. So the first one's going to be um, a consumption logic app. So we'll start with that one. So here I've got um, a consumption logic app that I've set up previously. And um, I'll just add an USFTP connector just so you can see what it looks like. And for so I'm going to use SFTP SSH. Now, for quite a while, this connector hasn't worked, which is the, the bit that I've kind of been a bit blocked on because I've been quite keen to use this approach for one scenario we had. But this connector wasn't working, and it was because the version of SSH.net that the connector used was out of date. So um, it looks like that connectors had an upgrade at some point because this now works. So what I would do is um, let's just take the go in. We'll do get file content. I'm going to create a new connector here just so people can see. So we'll call that Mike SFTP 99. So the host name for my um, for my connection is going to be the storage account. Um, the username is going to be <coughs> the username down here. The password, which I'm obviously not going to show you, but I'm going to paste it in. And then the rest of the settings you can pretty much leave. Um, the root path, I just set that as a slash, so that'll just be in the home directory, what uh, the user account's able to see. Um, but you could do a sub path on that if you wanted. And then the other thing I think you tend to need to do is disable the SSH host key validation. So if I create that connector now, and you can see I should be able to kind of browse into the um, into the folder here, and you can you can see um, there's the Amazon invoice. That connector is now working, whereas previously it wasn't. And if I um, if I just run run this, you'll be able to see we go through. And I've got two example connectors here. So one of them gets the file contents, so you can see we've read that file, and the other creates just a dummy text file on the uh, on the FTP server, so we can see that here. So there we go. So that shows um, the consumption, the ability with the consumption logic app using the consumption API connectors. The SFTP with SSH now works, um, and, and actually I'm going to just run it again. We could see it. Um, let's give that a chance to run through. So we could see that the the file was there over SFTP, but we'll just show that it's also there. If you go into here, you can see that's the file that's just being created. So that could trigger a, a storage event when it got created. Would be quite cool. Okay, so next up, we're going to have a look at a, um, a standard logic app now. So we'll do, um, I guess we'll do one from scratch to begin with. So, so the connector here, um, you've got a couple of choices. So if we go um, SFTP, so we've got the... Um, the SFTP SSH cloud connector, so that's really using the same as logic apps um, on consumption, so that should work. However, you also um, have the choice of using um, the built-in connector as well, so there's a built-in one here. And the key difference between the two connectors is the cloud one goes over the public connection. If you've got things like private endpoints and VNet integration set up, you would have to use the built-in connector to leverage the benefits of, um, of being able to use that private network in Azure. So just to set one up, if we go for file content, so I've, um, I'm going to create a new connector again just to show the, the setup details. So we'll call it um, Mike2 
so the storage account name is going to be um, the same as the host address. So that's the full name with blob.co.windows.net. Uh, blob the username needs to be the, um, the full username that you would see in the storage account blade. Password is going to be the password that you paste in. The root directory I'm going to set is um, as a slash. Um, and then I think that was it. So I think we didn't, one difference here, we didn't use that host key validation disable here. So if we create the connector, and then next we've got the file path. So I'm going to just get that from my other logic app just to which I'll have a look at again in a minute. So the path here, we've got slash shared folder slash Amazon invoice. Um, and there's, if you notice, there's like less settings to configure here. So it's it's pretty straightforward. But I had a bit of hassle setting the connector up and that file path. Um, so if we save that. Then if we go so it'll probably be the host time refreshing or something. If we go and run the trigger now. And you can see there we went and got the got the content from the file and that you know basically that just works exactly the same as the consumption one but it's just the networking is going to be different because it's a built-in connector now next up what i wanted to show was um, just to have a look at the config so when we set up a logic app standard we get a bunch of config um kind of behind the scenes now i'll tell you what we'll do we'll just go and look at um so we wanted the connections here. So here we'll see we've got two service provider connections. So these are the ones that I've kind of configured um, in the two little examples I've set up. So you can see here it's pulling in some of the details. I guess that's pulled in half the password, which may not be the most um, friendly thing to do. But um, so you can see that's where those connectors are, are configured there and then we can go into the um into the config bit here now here you've got you can see we've got the two sftp connections i've set up that sftp underscore one two and then just sftp underscore here so we'll, we'll focus on these settings kind of if I sort of can highlight them in some way, just these ones down here, because they're the first connector that I set up. Um, the key things I wanted to show, so we've got the root directory here, which is just, I'll see if we can display that actually. So that's just the slash that says when you log in, take the user's home directory and just start at that path. So you probably would want that to be slash in most cases. Um, the host directory is just my... Um, blob account and then these settings are just the ones that came through when we configured the connector and then we've got the username and then the passwords there so you can see those all come from um, when we set the connector they go into the app settings in the standard logic app and we could probably do things like change maybe change the username password to come from key vault references or something like that would be quite a good way of doing it um, but that's where you would kind of change those settings by environment. Now, next up, we wanted to look at a um, slightly more advanced scenario. So I've got not just get a file, but I've also got to upload a file. And we'll just show the slight differences in the config here. So they're both using the same connector. We read the Amazon invoice. The upload, I'm just going to create a new file. I'm going to give it some content. And... And again, that, that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward to use this connector. So if I um, if I go and run this, this is the same workflow just in the background. You can see I had a few problems here kind of configuring it, which is the, the kind of reason that I um, I wanted to 
do this quick video, but um, here you can, uh, you can see this sort of runs in the background. We've got get file content, so you can see we get the Amazon invoice here. And then we've got upload file content. So we've created a file called test.txt. And let's see if we go and refresh over in FileZilla. There we've got our, our text file. So the good news is both of those connectors are now working with storage accounts with the FTP proxy on the front. Um, so that opens up some new scenarios and Hats off for the, um, the team update and the consumption connector as well, because that not working previously was a bit of a pain. But uh, it looks like that's good now, and uh, I must have missed the notification for that, because I've been waiting for that for a while. So uh, thanks to Ricardo and Rick for asking the question, and, uh, and hopefully a little quick demo video here will help other people figure out how to con configure the connectors.